Welcome back to my tech farm. I have a fiber laser engraver review for this video. This is Hansmaker F1 Pro 20 watt fiber laser engraver. I got this box for free, but there is no additional payment. However, this video and actually the whole channel is sponsored by Polymaker, who became a channel sponsor. I tested many blue dyed laser engravers on this channel, and they are great for engraving and cutting of the wood. Fiber lasers are designed mostly to engrave metals. I had some success with some plastic and even on some stone, but I will test this in this video. As always, few words about the safety. Laser engravers are tools and not toys. The most important is the eye protection. Um, also use it in a good ventilated room. For this review video, I'm using the balcony outside, but if I use my fiber laser engraver inside on the winter, for example, I use the vacuum cleaner pipe, place it near to exhaust those fumes outside. And the third one is never leave your engraving without the attention. Even if the engraving of the metal is less risky compared to the engraving or cutting of the wood, which may catch flame, but even then you should always supervise your engraving. Few other specifications from the website. The working area is 110 by 110 millimeters. The engraving speed is 10,000 millimeters per second. This is very big speed. And it is possible because you don't have moving parts, only rotating mirrors, which points the laser to a certain point, And this may work much faster. And now the most important and interesting uh, information, ultra long lifespan. 100,000 hours, and I calculated it. For example, if we use it six hours daily, in that case, it will last uh, 46 years. That's quite long investment. Suppose Slyburn software, but let's see what's in the box. The packaging is good. Everything is well protected in this white foam. This is content of the package. This is the holder and the main unit. User manual cable, safety glasses, shield, which can be attached with the magnets and the power adapter, the output is 12 volts and 20 amperes, quite beefy. The shield I will not use in this video, it's for the handheld mode engraving. Now let's start with assembling. <laughs> Connecting the cables and it's done. I got the wrong plug, this is not the EU plug, but uh, luckily this is quite standard, so I can use my own cable. This one is a little bit shorter, but it will do the job. And dear has maker, this is your plug. These are the plugs on the back side. Input for the DC power. Uh, lifting, this will connect with the Z-axis. Rotary extension, the, I don't have that unit, but we can connect the rotary unit, then we can engrave cylindrical objects. This is SDS, and I don't know what is this exactly, because there is no information in user manual. Maybe this is just for the firmware update, or maybe it can engrave in offline mode. But I don't think so, because I think it will be mentioned. And this is the USB Liburn. It is the connection with the laptop. From the top, this is the power button. And we have the arrows properly lifting the whole engraver up and down, setting the focus. And don't forget to take off the lens cover. Now let's talk about the software. And it looks like it is not only compatible with the Liburn, but it is the only option. Which is fine, only it is not completely free software. Of course, if somebody buys this for almost $2,000, he can afford $100 more for the Liburn. But I'm curious when will these laser engraver companies start doing something similar, like we have with the laptops. For example, Windows, if you buy it together with the laptop, it is much cheaper compared if you buy it separately. And here, the laser engraving companies can make some kind of contact with the Liburn and get some license together with the laser. And definitely they should improve their website. For example, uh, I use the Windows, so I have to install some driver, which is fine, I found it on their website. But uh, also I have to install the configuration file. And in user manual it says that it is in the knowledge base, which I couldn't find. I was searching on their website at least half hours, but it's not there. So I'm waiting the answer from the support, so I can install this configuration file in the library, and then I can continue the review. Now, a few days later, I have some progress. We could exchange only one email per day because of this time dilatation. First of all, they don't provide configuration file. Okay. The second problem I noticed that uh, my library license is only for the dyed laser, so I have to buy the Galvo license, which cost me $100. Next problem was that the picture was mirrored, but it's a very easy fix in the library, just enabling this checkbox, and now the picture is correct, not mirrored anymore. And now I still have the problem that the picture is a little bit bigger engraved compared to the design. This means I have to configure this lens. 
but it is not so easy because I need a lot of test engravings. And it is a little bit expensive to do the test engravings on this steel, for example. Uh, unlike with the dye laser, where I can use the cheap white paper sheets, here it is not easy. Uh, I found this uh, black uh, craft papers or something like that. They work fine and uh, they are quite cheap. My settings are 500 millimeters per second speed, 80% power and 50 kilohertz frequency works fine. And the engraving is not so strong, but visible. Calibration of the Galvar lasers is not so easy. Unlike with the Cartesian uh, engravers or printers, we just set the scale for X and Y axis and we are done. But with Galvar lasers, we have that mirror which points the laser. And for example, if we engrave a square in the center of the work area, we want the same size if it is engraved in the corner. So not only we have to change the scale for X and Y axis, but also the bulge, skew and trapezoidal settings. This means I have to engrave a lot of squares, measure the corners and distortion, and then do some settings and calculation. I will do this mostly off camera, but if I success, uh, you will get my configuration file. But definitely I should charge them for this. There will be another break because I'm waiting for information from them. Because uh, before this calibration, I have to set the focus. Very important is to set it accurately. And setting the focus with these two red dots, which have to align on each other, is not too accurate. I checked I can have a plus minus two or three millimeter errors. That, that's quite big error for this accuracy. And if I know the distance, then I can measure it with a ruler. Or I can 3D print some part and use that for the setting the focus. In this case, I can have the accuracy of, let's say, plus minus half millimeters, which is now enough in this case. After the weekend, I got the answer that the distance is 195 millimeters, but uh, no chance. I know it is much higher. According to these red dots, uh, it should be around 205 millimeters. From now on, I'm using this distance for the focus, but it also means that my configuration file will not be so accurate. But let's start with those rectangles. This will be real time speed. And it will be a quite big work. It is deformed in every direction. In three steps, the scale and trapezoid is fixed. So distance between these corners is 80 millimeters in all four direction. And now let's move to the other because uh, this is still deformed like a curve. In my case, the skew is set correctly, the distance between diagonal corners. And now the bulge, as you can see, it has some curve to the inside. And here I needed the two steps, but finally this last square is a real square. But of course this accuracy is not super good because I'm using this ruler, but it is better than the original one. On the screen you can see my settings, you can copy them, even if you do your own calibration, this is a good start point. And I am outside again to finish the engravings and I will start with the stainless steel. By the way, in the meantime on their website I noticed that they write that they give some gift. Maybe they will give it the light burn lit sense together with the laser engraver, but I didn't got the confirmation about this. I'm setting the focus 205 millimeters until this yellow edge. I will engrave the numbers, the dimensions on this open-end wrench. Don't blink or you will miss it. This is real-time speed and these are only the outlines, which are visible, but they are very thin lines. So let's try to color them. This is also real-time engraving and uh, finally this is very visible. Let's finish other numbers too. And believe it or not, this was very useful engraving for me. This is brass and one of my favorite function is deep engraving on the brass. We can make some kind of coins if you want to. Well, I will jump in the video, but approximately you can see how much time it needs for one pass. It's finished, but looks overburdened a little bit. I'm not sure if I remember correctly the cleaning pass, but I will give it a try before I move it. This is still a real time speed, only two passes, but with that uh, cross hatch. Not exactly what I expected. I thought it would be deeper and cleaner, but I have to experiment a little bit more with the settings, but not in this video. Now this will be something new even for me. This is another aluminum. I bought this from the Banggood a long time ago, and I don't even know the settings here, but I don't know. Let's give it a try. Let's see if I can do something in the first attempt. If not, then I have to print some experimenting tabs, rectangles. 
This is also real time speed, only two passes. It's there, but not really what I expected. I will vary the speed from 200 to 1200. Power is 80%, frequency 50 kHz. Okay. And this was only one pass, and the first one looks the best, so I'll try to engrave the logo again. Maybe it could get one more pass, but this is also very clean and I'm happy with this. I did some experimenting with the Focus 2. So the first square was engraved on 204mm, then 206, 205 and 203. So this is the strongest, so the Focus should be set on approximately 204mm from the body of the engraver. Also one of my favorite functions of the fiber lasers is the rust removing. And even if this is cylindrical, I will try to demonstrate here, because I can engrave here a square and then I can rotate it by my hand and do another engraving. But of course, in this case, I would actually 3D print some holders and rotate it there. But for the demonstration, I will just do it here. I'm not sure if my first settings will be correct, but let's see. These are three passes, but with that uh, cross hedge. <laughs> and then I should rotate it and do another. And actually this is exactly what rotary unit would do. It will not rotate constantly, but rotate a little bit, you can do some part of the engraving and it will rotate a little bit, let's say 10 degrees or something like that, and do another engraving. And let's finish this segment, the whole diameter, but I will speed up this part. Now let's try to engrave some 3D printed plastic. These two are PETG materials, ASA, TPU for the AMS, and I had no success, or maybe I just couldn't find the correct settings for the PLA. Here I want to do some experimenting. And the result is very similar, speeds from 400 up to 1200, 80% power and 30 kHz frequency. But uh, let's uh, do some with more passes. Interesting thing, if I give it to too many passes, it will melt the plastic and not engrave it. Well, I was experimenting a lot, but one pass is important. Let's do it. And this is the closest I could get. Uh, speed 500, uh, power 75% and frequency 30. Now on the gray color it is not so visible, but let's try the orange one. I lower the focus, same settings. Definitely much more visible, but my positioning sucks. <laughs> ASA, still exactly same settings. Oh, maybe even too strong for this. Keep you for the AMS, I never tried this before, same settings. Again, on a gray color it is not so visible, but definitely it's there. Let's see if I can do some deep engraving on this rock. I found one which has a quite nice flat surface on one side. I'll try to use the same settings like in my previous video. Before we continue, I'm not sure if you can see this dust. So definitely this is why you should do this in very good ventilated room or use some exhaust system. The engraving is there and it is quite deep. I'm not sure if you can see this on the screen too. But it is not so nice like the one in my previous video because this rock is some kind of porous. So the quality has depend a lot from the rock type. But I'm not familiar with this. And now type of conclusions, but first... Ah, it's quiet now. I checked a little bit the background of this company, and it is quite a big company. They are in the laser industry more than 25 years, and recently they decided to make something for the home users. And they created the Hands Maker F1 Pro. But what they must understand is that the home users need uh, the whole product, the whole ecosystem, finished. And here the hardware is good, but everything else is unfinished. Even the setting, the focus, the distance, I should explain it myself, because those two red dots are not too accurate. No configuration file for the light burn. I know they are working on their own software, but it's not finished yet. So, okay, there are two advantages here. I can see that it is quite compact because the whole unit is inside this yellow body. I tested one fiber laser where this main unit is separate and it requires much more space and it is not so comfortable for the use, especially in handhold mode. 
okay, this is a little bit heavy, but uh, it is more compact. Another thing that don't forget, this is very long investment. The lifespan is 100,000 hours. So as I mentioned, the hardware is good. And basically using this video, you can do much more than using the user manual. And uh, you can jump, you can check the price and compare them because if the price is good, then basically you can find a good hardware and using this video, you can get a good use from it. Now, this is my experience with the Handsmaker F1 Pro. If you have some other experience, then write me down a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving.